Hello, everyone. Welcome to Women Seeking Wholeness. I'm Cherie Burton. Wow. You know, uh, when I first, I just hit 25,000 downloads, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, This podcast has been such a balm to my soul. It's a gift to me. I tell people all the time, my friends and compatriots and uh, associates and whoever listened to me, my family members, like the reason I started this podcast is because I had things I needed to say. And if I didn't say them, I was literally going to explode. <laughs> and I look at what's happened the last year. I started in February of 2019. And I was looking at everything that has happened since <laughs> February of 2019 in my life and how the mainstay for me to stay grounded in my own truth, aligned with my own voice and learning from other guides and mentors has been to interview people on this podcast. And so today I just wanted to offer just, I don't know how this is going to tie together, but I have things I need to say. I think it's just because number one, you all know that I have been healing my marriage with my husband of almost 25 years. We have five children, ages five to 23. And we have been in the middle of a storm the last couple of years trying to, I mean, I think it's just because we both arrived at this like critical juncture. It wasn't necessarily a midlife crisis because there's this real thing called a Chiron return. So if you ever get your chart done, your solar return chart done by somebody who knows who knows how to read astrology really well, um, it's a real thing. You hit a planetary crisis in your being <laughs> of how you're evolving around your own sun and moon and emotions and what's happening and what the setup is for you to really come to your own knowing. So both of us hit that. And um, I have to say, I was the biggest culprit and didn't realize that I was the biggest culprit in neglecting our relationship and our spiritual partnership, the passion and the love between us for so many years. So anyway, there was that. We almost got divorced. We've been separated since June and just barely moved back in together last week. So this Easter was beautiful for us to reconnect and uh, just be with what's happened. And so there's that. So that's been, you know, me working through trauma and trying to be right and then being devastated and then realizing how much I loved him and then seeing what it did to my children and just that whole thing. Okay. So that has all happened within this last year of doing the podcast. Like I said, the, the people, the guests that I have had on this podcast have been phenomenal at helping me to, to come back into my own embodied wisdom and to just understand the feminine. And that's just been my whole shtick in life is to understand feminine energy, to understand the consciousness of the feminine, the sacred feminine, the feminine face of God, heavenly mother, the ancient mysteries of, of woman and what that means. So I had to live a few things in my body and being. And every time I pray and ask to have a different kind of knowing, it shows up as a life experience. Like who can relate to that? So there's that. And then also coming to terms with what my own spiritual truth is. I think I've disillusioned some of my listeners. They're like, you know, my heritage being Mormonism. But I've said for so many years that I sniff down truth wherever it is. I don't care who started it or what, when, where, like it... For me, if it's truth, it's truth. Buddhism or Judaism or Hinduism or I don't care. If it's true, it's true. So that's part of the mystery of the feminine is the inclusivity and the diversity and the expansiveness of all truth, all people, all cultures, all backgrounds, all faiths. Can't we all just be one and get along? So that whole unity consciousness thing has really been up for me. So you've been seeing me process this in this podcast. You've been hearing me. You know, I did a Mary Magdalene series, a six-part Mary Magdalene series last spring. I'm going to literally resurrect that. I get triggered every Easter because Mary Magdalene gets left out of that story. And she is literally a central figure to the whole Easter story. When I say I get triggered, like I'm not mad. It's just, ah, like, you know, there's, there's a whole side of Christianity that we're not honoring. And that is the feminine. And that is Christ coming to a woman first to spread the good news. He's risen, right? So understanding Christ consciousness, you know, transitioning through what that actually means for me. I no longer am in a space where I'm going to be dictated to. I need to run it through my embodied wisdom, which is the feminine, which is connection and groundedness and staying true to your heart and your holy of holies and that center space where you just know 
and no one can take that from you. And so I've been interviewing a variety of experts and thought leaders and friends on this podcast who are doing this their own way. And not every single guest I have on here, I completely agree with, but I just think it's fascinating fodder for discussion on how we're going to each of us in this really crazy time on the earth, come back to our own knowing. And I say the word sovereignty a lot, soul sovereignty on this podcast. And it's hard fought for me. Like it's, it's a hard fought process to come back into my own knowing. And when I say sovereignty, that doesn't diminish the sovereignty of God in my life. I always teach this thing called surrender of like, I don't know, help me, tell me, show me. So there's, I, I have the knowing that I'm not like God, of course, but just the liberation of, I have direct access to source anytime, anywhere, anyhow, any who. Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I don't have that authority or just because I'm who I am in a regular old schmo Joe woman. <laughs> it doesn't matter who we are. We all have that direct access. So to me, that's been super liberating to not have to go through a system or a hierarchy or an institution of any kind or another human no matter how enlightened or how connected to God they may be, because there are holy people on this earth, I need for my own mental and emotional well-being to come to a complete knowing that I have this for myself and God directly, no matter what I do, no matter where I've been, no matter who I am, what I am, that that is set. So this concept of this beautiful flowing grace, for some reason, the first 50 years of my life was lost on me. And I have had to come into my own permission through a variety of ways and means to gift myself that. So I am just a relentless truth seeker. And so I bring a lot of collective voices together for you on this podcast. If you're struggling with finding your own knowing, if you never feel like you're doing it good enough, or if you never feel like you're worthy enough, or you never feel like you're quite getting it to be able to conceptualize God or Jesus or angels or any of the things that are mystery, you're not alone. And there's a reason these things are veiled from us. It's not so we can be tested to see how good or bad we're going to (laughs) be. It's so that we access it within because everything we're seeking is seeking us. And everything that we want, we can access within. We are the common denominator of every experience that we're ever going to have, past, present, and future. So we have to be able to come to peace with who we are and how we receive truth. So this has been a really contemplative journey for me. It hasn't just been seeking out outside sources. I've tried to go within and really, really figure out what I know. I love Rob Bell's podcast, The Robcast. Um, I think it's episode 213, Jesus H. Christ, part five, and he called it What She Knows. He's a funny guy. He's kind of a woke Christian, kind of his own style of delivery around what the gospel is. We need more people like him, honestly, speaking out what Jesus was really teaching or trying to show before it got watered down or before it became business. But he talked about the story of Mary and Martha in the Bible. So Jesus comes to this village where a woman named Martha is there. She opens up her home to him. She has a sister named Mary. And it's believed, many researchers and and theologians believe that that Mary was Mary Magdalene. So Mary basically was sitting at his feet. She was listening to everything he said. And Martha was kind of distracted or bumbling around making preparations. So she came to Jesus and she's like, Lord, don't you care that my sister leaves me to do all this work by myself? Like that whole martyr thing, right? She's like, why don't you tell her to help me? And he's like, hey, Martha, Martha, you're, you're worried and upset about so many things. There's only a few things that you really need or really actually indeed just only one thing. And Mary has chosen that that one thing and she's chosen the better thing and it's not going to be taken away from her. He doesn't really intervene. Like he doesn't get in the middle of their squabble <laughs> if there is a squabble or he doesn't, you know, try to make Martha right. You know, he doesn't get in the middle and tell her what to do. You know, and she doesn't pull her sister aside. She doesn't go quietly and say, you know, you should be helping me. She tries to put Jesus in the middle of it. And how often do we do that, right? I think we think of deity as fixers for us rather than guides and co-facilitators and co-creators. Jesus modeled that very well in the New Testament. What's going on between the two of these sisters? It's just so intriguing. We don't know Mary of Bethany, Lazarus' sister, Mary, Martha. They're all siblings, the woman with the alabaster 
box that's mentioned. It's all the same Mary, I believe. It's all Mary Magdalene. But anyway, you think to yourself, why isn't Jesus honoring this request of Martha? Can you go talk to my sister? He just points out that there's stress there and anxiousness and worry. And he's trying to calm that by saying, hey, things are fine. Your sister's okay. She's chosen this better part and it's not going to be taken from her. So he's just teaching and you know, modeling what's best. And I think of all of us in quarantine right now, bustling around or totally zoning out, right? You see both. There's two camps of, th- of thought right now. If you go on social media, it's either up your skills or just be with what is. And I don't think this is a time to up your skills. I think that it's the time to choose the better part. So I've been thinking about that a lot because I am a Mary Magdalene enthusiast and I am a hobbyist scholar of her life and her teachings. And if you haven't read the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, she had her own oral tradition and teachings. They were found to be dated about, I think, 200 AD. It just proved through three different ancient texts discovered in Egypt that there had been an oral tradition of her teachings and that people had been for hundreds of years continuing her teachings. And she was obviously with Christ and teaching his better part. So if you haven't read that, Dr. Karen L. King's Gospel of Mary Magdalene, I believe is the name of the book. That's I always tell people to read that first because it's historical, it's academic, best translation I've seen. So anyway, back to the story of Mary and Martha, Mary sitting at Jesus' feet, Jesus kind of using that as a teaching moment for both of them, kind of validating for Mary, hey, you're you're learning, you're, you're not distracted. Martha, you're kind of distracted. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure that she would have taken it as an affront, only that she just wanted him to intervene and make it better. Yeah, the other, the other part of the New Testament that I love with that same kind of like choosing the better part is Mary Magdalene when she comes before Jesus and she has this pint of pure spikenard. It's a really expensive essential oil perfume. She poured it on his feet, wiped his feet with her hair. You know, it says that the whole house was filled with this fragrance, super expensive, like many days or weeks wages at that time. And so they're, all the apostles are like, you could have given this money to the poor. And he defends her again and says, hey, leave her alone. Basically what he did with Martha, you know, leave her alone. It was intended that she was going to save this really expensive perfume, this ointment, this, this oil for the day of my burial. She's taken this really potentially extravagant gift and she's made this ritual, this religious ritual that's holy, it's sacred ground. So like, yeah, why are you even talking about money right now? Money is such a non-issue. So she's pouring it. <laughs> And she has no problem blatantly like offending Jesus' disciples. That's why I love her. (laughs) Because if you read the Gospel of Thomas and the Gospel of Philip in the Apocrypha, it's the same deal. They're like, why are you telling her to Jesus? They're like, why are you telling her stuff you're not telling us? Or they're going to Mary and saying, why don't you teach us the stuff that he taught you? And it's the same principle she was always the one going to the deeper truth. She wanted him to impart the deeper wisdom behind what was just on the surface. Don't just give me doctrine. Don't just give me laws. Don't just tell me, you know, give me what's underneath it. So a lot of her gospel is about the inner life, the kingdom within, if you will. It's just more of this way of thinking unconventionally, non-absolutist, non-linearly, Because the masculine way, and bless their hearts, I know there's men who listen to this, right? We're not, it's not against men. It's just women have this ability to go what's underneath and get to the source of the issue, problem, or principle. But culturally, people wanted to put, have been wanting to put women in the kitchen. (laughs) And Jesus was like, Mary doesn't belong in the kitchen right now. She's sitting in the living room getting to the deeper stuff. A lot of people say, you know, she was at the feet of a rabbi. And if you're a rabbi, you're married, period. So maybe this was before they were married. I'm one of those who believe Jesus and Mary Magdalene were married, but maybe this was before, you know, he's just on the move from town to town at this point, And he's telling his students this. He's, he's healing, he's preaching, he's announcing the kingdom of God all over the place. So this, this word kingdom, it's a loaded word. It's a volatile word to people because it was a new word revolutionary thing to say that the kingdom of heaven is not Herod's kingdom or the, you know, Galilean, Judean kingdom of the Romans. It's inside. So that's just been something I've been thinking about a lot. 
Jesus, he was a revolutionary in the way he treated women, in the way he he had as his closest apostle and disciple, a woman. During this last Easter, I was just, as I do every Easter, I light a little candle for her. The woman that's the most looked past figure, not only at Easter, but in Christianity itself, in the world. I think what we're coming into is a time where we can openly speak about parts of the gospel, parts of truth, and I'm not just talking about Christianity, I'm talking at large, where we're nestled in and we have to look at the deeper invitation and the deeper truths that we need to access within ourselves as we're in a time of world chaos. And if you're awake and if you're really aware of what's happening, you'll look at what the better part is for you. For me, it's not waiting for someone, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but it's not waiting for a prophet to declare something that I already know. I don't need to wait for something to come down from the top in a hierarchical way. So we, as followers of truth, find the better way, the betterment for humanity. What is the higher road? What is this virus actually teaching us? I've been a guest on four different podcasts, teaching, remunerating on what this is actually bringing us to as a collective, rise to the actual greater truth, the deeper knowing of what what the invitation is, which is to live in harmony to be one, to challenge the rules and traditions that hurt and malign and marginalize people. I think in maybe two years, maybe less, maybe more, we will look back at this time and see that we either missed or embraced an opportunity to wake up because this is a time for planetary awakening. It's not, I mean, yes, a lot of people are losing their jobs. There's a lot of stress. I mean, in Utah County where I live, they just did a news piece on how domestic violence, 911 calls have increased 75%. That breaks my heart. Some of you know that my friend Dimple and I are doing, she lives in the UK and I interviewed her last week on the podcast, but she and I are doing a free marriage masterclass on April 23rd. So depending on when you listen to this, you may have missed it, but April 23rd is not that far away. It's next week. 10 a.m. Mountain, but we're doing a free two-hour marriage masterclass as a side note. But she and I have talked a lot about how this is an escalating time for relationships, individuals. The way we show up in relationship is merely a reflection on how we feel in relationship to ourselves. And how we feel in relationship to ourselves is a direct correlation to how we interpret divinity, because divinity is not something that lives outside of us. I mean, yes, there is that component to it it being outside of us, but the true pure source is inside. Yeah, that's also a hard fought (laughs) truth for me to learn. But this whole thing um, about disappointing God rather than honoring your own sacred voice and following that, I think was the deeper truth of what Jesus and Mary Magdalene were teaching. Um, It wasn't that he was afraid of God's wrath or if he didn't finish it his work, just like all of us have a work. We can't live in fear of missing the boat or not cutting it or not being enough if we are doing our best to choose the better part. I think the highest way to be is not to fear the wrath and judgment of our peers or those with power over us or seeming power over us, perceived power over us like governments or religious institutions or academics or any any organization or institution that tries to supersede your own knowing. I think evolving with the higher law of love to fight against tribal groupthink and tradition is one of the deeper things this virus is bringing us to. So the Christed path, the path of the Magdalene, it's not one that yields to tradition or orthodox doctrine or institutionalized learning. It's the path that is yielding to the voice within. And that, I believe, is the better part of the gospel, is the better part of truth, no matter, you know, I'm talking here about Christianity, but I know that there are many people who don't ascribe to Christianity who listen to this podcast. I'm talking about universal source truth. Sometimes you have to rebel against the norm or the group think, um, the sheeple, if you will. And I don't mean that in a sheeple way that people, all people who are religious are sheeple. I'm not saying that at all because at my heart, I am a religious person, very much so. I also have a knowing that we are at a time on the earth where our voices yearn to be heard. 
They yearn for the highest truth, impeccable integrity, fierce compassion, radical acceptance. And that's the age we're moving into, including all people, all orientations, all belief systems as one. And to me, that is the path of the feminine, the sacred feminine. And that is awakening in mass. So these are just some thoughts I've had. This is what's been on my mind and heart. Being a renegade <laughs> in your own way, I guess. Being your own kind of revolutionary. It's about picking yourself up by your bootstraps and getting to your own knowing and wisdom. And there will be teachers that show up along the way. You'll never be alone in it when you say yes to true awakening. It isn't the easy path. Nothing of substance ever is. Arriving at any kind of truth is always a battle. Um, but the true comfort in this, I think, is just knowing that we can have that radical acceptance and compassion for ourselves, that we are not on a test for worthiness of how good we can do things or any kind of performance-based worth. That old programming has to go. Grace must flow. Hey, that rhymed. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you all tune in to some of our upcoming episodes and, and of course to the free marriage masterclass that Dimple and I are doing. I'll put a link to it in the show notes and on my Facebook pages, Women Seeking Wholeness. If you want to heal any kind of um, relationship or anything that's exterior, external, you heal you first. Again, going back to Christ and Magdalene, this is what they taught is it starts within and Jesus even said, the kingdom of God does not come by observation. It doesn't come by what you're observing or looking at or obeying. It comes from within. The Christed path, again, is not the easy path. And it's not just the Christian path. It's the path of your soul. It's honoring and heeding your soul voice. To get in touch with that is to get still, to honor divine connection time as the highest daily priority, meditation, guided meditation. It comes with loving indiscriminately and radically, moving your physical body, creating state changes in your physical body so that you break the neural patterning that wants to run amok, knee-jerk reactions. And this is where domestic violence lives. This is where we get into trouble when we let the ego ride. We don't stay awake. We don't stay aware of our own state. I'm finishing up my 12-week Stan Speak Shine School. We've had, I think, 16 or 17 students. It's been amazing, and I've learned from every one of them. We've really climbed deep into all of this stuff around how do you get still? How do you love? How do you center your thoughts on things of the light? How do you get still? How do you go within? What is that? How do you hear your soul voice? So just kind of stay tuned to standspeakshine.com because I'll be announcing my next round of the 12-week Stand Speak Shine school coming up here probably in the next month or so. But for sure, get outside right now. <laughs> That's all I can say is we need Mother Nature. We need to put our feet in the earth. We need to feel the wind in our hair. It's spring. It's new life. It's rebirth. Even though it looks like things are crumbling around us, it's a new rebirth. It's resurrection time, baby. <laughs> so... Have that space for yourself where you get out. Be with those you love. Be with yourself. Learn the intonation of your soul voice through journaling, meditation, getting out in nature, and really just dancing and singing and being alive and moving your body, being in flow, because that brings the grace in. That is how grace enters our life, is when we initiate that spark and open ourselves to receive the gift. And it's an unabashed free gift for everyone that you're worthy of at all times, no matter what. You put your heart in the right place and you're there. It will flow to you. Uh, I just felt to speak more about Mary Magdalene. I felt to speak more about the divine feminine, about the expansiveness happening on the earth, the rebirth, deeper meaning to the virus, which is an invitation and a healing gesture for each of us to not just look at what we're observing, the kingdom of God not coming by observation, but within. So have a blessed week, and we'll talk to you next time on Women Seeking Wholeness.